Well, to talk about Alberta's Bill 20, we're now joined by the Mayor of Calgary, Jody Gondek. Mayor Gondek, good to see you again. Thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me on. So listen, uh, your predecessor, Nahed Nenshi, he, he calls this bill an act of spite, saying that the Smith government is doing this, quote, out of revenge on the voters of Calgary and Edmonton who did not vote the way they wanted them to. And, you know, to be clear, Mr. Nenshi is running to lead the provincial NDP now, but do you share his assessment? Do you see this bill as an act of spite? I see this bill as an incredible act of overreach and um, yet another example of the desire for control and power by this provincial government who should actively be working with municipalities to help us take care of the citizens that we commonly serve. And instead, it's one thing after another where they want to dominate and control municipalities. Okay, an act of overreach, although to hear it from the government and the Minister of Municipal Affairs, uh, they essentially say this bill is about making sure that there is transparency, making sure that there's accountability for council, that elections are fair, uh, and municipalities are entities of the province. Do they not have the right to oversee civic affairs? Municipalities are already under the oversight of the provincial government. Um, you know, there's there's many measures that are laid out in Bill 20 that they already have the power to do. They have the ability uh, through the minister to remove a member of council if there is some sort of conduct that deserves it. We've seen it happen in a neighboring municipality. So if you already have this power, why the overreach? It's, it's kind of, I don't have any good words for it because it's staggering the amount of power they want to have and yet this is a government that created a bill um, about a sovereignty movement and so if you want sovereignty so badly and you don't want overreach from the federal government then you should probably think about exactly what you're doing to municipalities well you know we have heard danielle smith earlier say that local councils have made choices that are looking to be more and these are basically her, her insinuations more partisan more ideological and she says that requires more transparency you know has your office or council failed to be transparent enough do you think Absolutely not. We have been transparent with the public. We've been transparent with the provincial government. Uh, we've been transparent with the federal government when they've asked for things. So um, this is simply an exercise in exerting power and flexing their muscle. And I don't know why they need to do it. They already are the parent of municipalities. We are creatures of the province. And so if you know you wanted to make a statement that you have power over us, you already do. This bill is not needed. So is this the you, you keep saying you don't know why i'm wondering since it's been announced last week what are the reasons that come up to your to your, to your mind is this an ideological push again uh, calgary for example in the last provincial election at one point looked like it might be going ndp do you see that as part of the equation here uh, it might be. I mean, the thing that I struggle with is the use of language, like uh, being able to remove members of council if it's in the public interest, yet public interest is not defined. And, you know, these conversations about how things have to align with provincial priorities. To me, that sounds incredibly ideological from a government who is saying they want to prevent ideology. It's actually pretty rich. At a municipal level, we don't run on a party system. I have no party leanings. I don't belong to any of the parties provincially or federally because I believe strongly that my job is to serve locally. And if you start chipping away at that by introducing a measure where the two biggest cities are now going to have to be faced with a party system, you're actually eroding our ability to work with other orders of government and really deliver value to the people that we serve. Okay, let me pick up on that point then. And for people who don't know, part of this bill does allow the creation of political parties at the local level. You say that will impede the work that you do. How does it actually do that? Well, first of all, we don't know what this even looks like because the only language that we've seen is consider regulations around creating parties as a, a pilot project in both Edmonton and Calgary, the two biggest municipalities. So you're covering a huge swath of the population and you're making um, candidates have to determine whether they're going to start a party or join a party. I don't know. They haven't defined it for us. And so if you really want to take away the ability for municipalities to make good, strong decisions on behalf of the people, you implement something like this. Now, this bill does come after an earlier bill that would allow the provincial government to, as you know, veto any deal struck between Ottawa and entities of the province like municipalities. Do you think both of these measures are essentially trying to create a united front against Ottawa? Is this what's motivating it? 
I mean, if you want to create a united front against Ottawa, they could have just, you know, spoken with us. I can tell you that mayors from across this country were not happy with the federal government because we weren't receiving enough infrastructure funding. We continue to be frustrated by both orders of government, frankly, not understanding that the income taxes that are paid by our people in our cities need to flow back to us so we can provide them with the services that they need. So, you know, I don't have a problem uh, forming a united front to get more from the orders of government that serve us, but this is certainly not the way to do it. Now, the UCP does have a majority in the Alberta legislature. I'm wondering where that leaves you. If you have such issues with this bill, where, where does that leave you to fight if they can pass this through the ledge so easily? Well, they'll be able to pass it without a problem. So where does it leave us? Um, I guess it leaves us in a place where after they pass it, we'll find out what it actually means. We'll find out what the regulations are. We'll find out what the definitions are. Um, hopefully there will be some sort of consultation process. But, you know, if it comes after it's passed, that doesn't help us very much. So municipalities right now are at the whim of the province. Not only have they reintroduced big money into elections. They're now saying that corporations and unions can contribute directly to candidates. Then they're saying, but if we don't like what happened, we can remove people. So now you got big money and you have overreach at the municipal level, and it makes no sense to me why they would do this. Mayor Gondek will continue to follow where this goes and uh, hopefully we'll speak again in future, but for this evening, thank you very much. Thank you, have a great night. You too.